we've understood the anatomy we've understood the function we've understood how they get injured we've understood how to clinically uh, diagnose a collateral tear let's move on to meniscus for meniscus i've told you their anatomy i've told you their function i've told you how they get injured now let's see how we can test them how we can provoke their symptoms see they are rotational or torsional stabilizers to test them to provoke their symptoms we need to rotate the knee we need to rotate the knee so how will you do it you have mcmurray's test you have apley's grinding test in mcmurray's test you take the patient and you flex and extend the knee you flex and extend the knee now while you're flexing and extending the knee you rotate the tibia as you're rotating the tibia you will notice that the injured piece of meniscus will somehow come between the tibia and the femoral condyle now once it comes between the tibia and the femoral condyles the patient will scream in pain you have provoked the symptoms your diagnosis is complete right this is your mcmurray's test there can either be pain or sometimes a clicking sound upon performing mcmurray's test now let me demonstrate mcmurray's test for you but before i begin let me ask you what is it for it is for the menisci either the medial or the lateral menisci the semi lunar cartilaginous structures in your knee joint now if you recall what was the function or the primary function of the menisci it was to stabilize the knee in rotation it was the rotational stabilizer of the knee so can you imagine what kind of provocative test we will perform to assess if it's injured or not we will basically try to compress the injured part of the meniscus between the femoral and the tibial condyles the moment we compress the injured part between these two condyles we will either feel a click or a pop or the patient will complain of pain that is what we are going to do in mcmurray's test now in order to do this test what we will do is we will first hyperflex the injured knee we will hyperflex it and then we will put our fingers on the part of the meniscus that we want to examine now remember menisci are located at the joint line if we want to feel the medial meniscus we will feel it at the medial joint line and if we want to feel the lateral meniscus we will feel it at the lateral joint line now let's start with medial meniscus because that is the one that is more commonly injured we'll flex the knee in hyperflexion and we'll put our index finger over the medial joint line and what are we looking for we are looking for a pop or a click or pain or wincing on the patient's face All right now once we have hyperflexed the knee then we'll perform internal rotation and varus force to assess the lateral meniscus and we'll perform external rotation and valgus force to assess the medial meniscus please remember this for medial meniscus you are applying external rotation of the tibia and applying valgus force to the knee and to assess the lateral meniscus you will apply internal rotation of the tibia and varus force to the knee are you clear on this for medial meniscus external rotation of the tibia and valgus force to the knee and once that is in this position from flexed position you will slowly extend the knee and you will keep on doing this extension and hyperflexion till you feel for a click or a pop on the medial joint line over the medial meniscus and you will also be observing the patient for a wince or pain making a diagnosis of medial meniscus injury if you want to assess the lateral meniscus you will apply internal rotation to the tibia and you will apply varus force and then again from a hyperflex position you will extend the knee while keeping your finger over the lateral joint line and again you will be feeling for a pop or a click or looking for pain or wins on the patient's face this is how you diagnose medial or lateral meniscus injury and this test is a mcmurray's test on the other hand there is apley's grinding test in this test you make the patient lie down prone you flex the knee to 90 degrees and then you grind on the torn meniscus to provoke the symptoms apley's grinding test now the test that i would like to demonstrate uh, for medial and lateral meniscus to you is apley's grinding test now it is exactly like how it sounds it's essentially you grinding the menisci between the tibia and the femoral condyles so all you have to do is make the patient lie down prone and once the patient is prone you take the injured knee and you flex it to 90 degrees 
Now you need to stabilize the femur as well as the tibia. Hold the ankle with your one hand and hold the femur with the other hand. This is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is holding the ankle with your one hand and then holding the leg with the other hand. Either way, your aim here is very simple. You need to apply force to the tibia towards the table. All right? You need to push the tibia towards the table, essentially trying to crush the injured part of the meniscus between the femoral and the tibial condyles. Now, while you're at it, while you're applying the force, you need to apply external rotation and internal rotation to bring the injured part of the meniscus between the axial force or the crushing force. This is a place grinding test for the medial and lateral meniscus injury of the knee. There is another test known as Thessaly test where you ask the patient to stand on the injured knee, flex the knee a little and then twist the knee. What are you doing? You are basically trying to provoke the symptoms here. This is a provocative test for meniscal injury. This is Thessaly test. But all of these are very painful. So the best test is a joint line tenderness where you take your finger and you press along the joint line. You take your finger and press along the joint line. The torn piece of meniscus, when you press on it, it will be painful. That's how you clinically diagnose meniscal injury. Okay, so Makmurre's test, Apley's grinding test, Thessaly test, these are all there, but they are painful. Joint line tenderness is the best clinical test. Now, the best test to assess the meniscal injury uh, clinically is a joint line tenderness. Now, what is joint line tenderness? You feel for tenderness on the joint line of the knee. How do you go about doing it? You flex the knee to 90 degrees and take your thumb or your index finger, whatever you feel like, and feel for tenderness at the joint line. Now, what is the joint line? It is the line between the distal femur and the proximal tibia. And that line is the joint line of the knee joint, right? You feel for joint line tenderness by palpating over the joint line. If there is tenderness on the anterior medial aspect, it suggests that the anterior horn of the medial meniscus is injured. If there is tenderness over the medial part, it suggests the body or the medial part of the meniscus is injured. If there is tenderness over the posterior medial aspect, it is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus that is injured. And the same thing can be correlated if you have tenderness over the anterior lateral, a lateral and the posterior lateral aspect of the joint. This is known as joint line tenderness, which is the best clinical test to diagnose meniscus injury. So we have talked about the clinical test for uh, collaterals. We have talked about the clinical test for meniscus. What about the clinical test for cruciate? What is the provocative test for cruciate? What is the action of cruciate? Sagittal plane stability, right? So you provoke the symptoms in sagittal plane. How do they get injured? Twisting injury, hyperextension, anterior translation, hyperflexion, posterior translation, you understood. Immediate swelling will be there. Patient will complain of instability, difficulty walking up or down the stairs. So what is the provocative test for ACL? For ACL, all you need to do is translate it anteriorly. Make the patient lie down. Flex the hip to 45 degrees and knee to 90 degrees and you stabilize the foot by sitting on it. Okay. And then translate the tibia anteriorly. That was the action that was supposed to be resisted by ACL. And if it is torn by doing this, it will be painful or the tibia will translate anteriorly. This is known as anterior drawer test. Anterior drawer test. Now, can you tell me what is posterior drawer test for PCL? Same position, just translate the tibia posterior. Just translate the tibia posterior. That is known as posterior drawer test for PCL. Now, let me show you the test for anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. Now, let's start with anterior cruciate ligament. Can you recall the principal action of the anterior cruciate ligament? The principal action of anterior cruciate ligament was to provide sagittal plane stability. Can you recall what was sagittal plane? The sagittal plane was the plane where your limb moves forward and backward. So this kind of movement, this kind of movement stability was provided by the anterior and the posterior cruciate ligaments. Now particularly what was the action of anterior cruciate ligament? The action of anterior cruciate ligament was to prevent the anterior translation of tibia. Prevent the anterior translation of tibia or to prevent hyperextension of the knee or to prevent hyper 
extension of the knee. This was the action of anterior cruciate ligament. Now, if a patient comes to you with an anterior cruciate ligament tear, what are the tests that you can perform? There are two important tests that you will perform. One is the anterior draw test. The other is the Lachman test. Let me demonstrate the anterior draw test to you. Now, in the anterior draw test, we'll ask the patient to flex the knee to 90 degrees. Now, some books say not the knee to 90 degrees, flex the hip to 45 degrees. Now, my friends, if you pay attention, if the knee is brought to 90, the hip will automatically go to 45. Or if you bring the hip to 45, the knee will automatically go to 90. So there is unnecessary confusion that is created. So essentially, what are you doing? You're flexing the hip to 45 and knee to 90 degrees. Now, in this position, you need to stabilize the foot. How will you stabilize the foot? Now, in order to stabilize the leg, I need to sit on the foot to hold its distal end. Sir, can I sit on your foot? Thank you. So I will sit on the patient's foot. Now the leg is stabilized because it's not going to move anywhere. Then I'll hold the tibia and put my thumb over the superior aspect of the tibia to feel the joint line and then bring my thumbs down just a little. And then I will try to pull the tibia or translate the tibia anteriorly. Right? Now normally there should be a firm end to this translation suggesting that the ACL is intact or the translation should be very minimal, very less, somewhere around 1 to 2 millimeters. If there is an ACL tear, what will happen? The tibia will translate anteriorly more than 3 or 4 or 5 millimeter or it will come translate anteriorly without any firm hard stop, suggesting that the ACL is torn. This is anterior drawer test. Now let me show you what is happening here. The patient has his knee flexed to 90 degrees, right? Now I'm holding the tibia and trying to trying to anteriorly translate. If the ACL is torn, the tibia will translate anteriorly. And if it's intact, the tibia will not translate anteriorly. This is anterior drawer test for anterior cruciate ligament. Now, there is one problem in anterior drawer test. When a patient injures their knee, when the patient injures their knee, the muscles around the knee will be in spasm, particularly the hamstring muscles, the hamstring muscles. Now, hamstring muscles, if they are in spasm, what will happen? So, this is where the hamstrings muscle go. Right? This is where they go. Now, if they are in spasm, what will happen? You will be unable to translate the tibia anteriorly, even if there is an ACL tear. Even if there is an ACL tear. So, there is a high chance of false negativity high chance of false negativity. That is why the better test for an acutely injured ACL or acutely injured knee is a Lachman's test where you just flex the knee to 20 degrees and translate the tibia anteriorly. Now in 20 degrees friends, the hamstrings are removed from the equation. When the hamstrings are removed from the equation, you only have ACL2 test. Okay, you apply the translation anteriorly and if ACL is torn, the tibia will translate anteriorly. That is known as the Lachman's test. This is the best test or the most sensitive test for ACL tear. The next test for anterior cruciate ligament is Lachman's test. And it is the test that we perform in acute knee injuries. Why is that? Because you see, for an anterior drawer test, you need to flex the knee to 90 degrees. And if the patient has acutely injured their knee, flexing the knee to 90 degrees would be painful. And also recall, whenever there is pain, the muscles around the area of pain will undergo spasm. The most important muscle here is hamstrings. When these hamstrings contract or in spasm, the tibia will not be translating anteriorly because the hamstrings are pulling the tibia. Now, in Lachman test, you do not flex the knee to 90 degrees. Instead, you flex it barely to 15 to 20 degrees. Now, let me show you. You can flex it 15 to 20 degrees. That's the flexion that you need. Now, if you're strong enough and the patient is light enough, you can do it easily. But if not, you need something between the couch and the thigh to flex it to 15 to 20 degrees. My personal favorite is my own knee. I would just place my knee under the patient's thigh to flex it around 15 to 20 to 30 degrees. That should be fine. Now, by doing this, what I have done is I have removed the hamstring pull from the equation. That is why Lachman test is the most sensitive test for ACL tear. Now, what do I do? 
I hold the femur and then I hold the tibia. Obviously, you're seeing which hands I'm using for which part of the body. I'm using the left hand for the thigh because it's on the outer surface and I'm using the right hand for the leg. Then what do I do? I translate the tibia anteriorly. I translate the tibia anteriorly. If the ACL is torn, the tibia will translate anteriorly and if it's intact, it will not. So this is what is happening to the bones when I perform the Lachman's test. I hold the femur and then I hold the tibia and then I try to translate the tibia anteriorly. This is what is known as Lachman's test and if the ACL is torn, the tibia will translate anteriorly and if it is intact, it might just translate a little but there will be a hard end point suggesting that the ACL is intact. This is the most sensitive test for ACL tear. What about PCL tear? I've already told you posterior draw test where you push the tibia posteriorly. There is another test for PCL known as Godfrey's sac test. What you do in this test is you flex both the hip and both the knees to 90 degrees bilaterally. If the PCL is torn, what will happen? The tibia will sag posteriorly because that was the action that was resisted by PCL. If it's torn, tibia will translate posteriorly. That is known as Godfrey's sac test. Now let's look at a test for posterior cruciate ligament. Now let's recall the action of posterior cruciate ligament. The action of posterior cruciate ligament was to prevent posterior translation of tibia and also to prevent hyperflexion of the knee. So what I'll be doing is I'll be flexing again the knee to 90 degrees or the hip to 45 degrees and then I will stabilize the foot just like how I started the position for anterior draw test. I will sit. Can I sit on your foot? No, I will sit on the foot of the patient, stabilize the leg and again hold the tibia. But this time what I'll be looking at is the sag of the tibia. Normally, the patient tibia is slightly anterior compared to the femur. Let me demonstrate with the bone. Normally, the tibia is slightly anterior to the condyles of the femur. You would notice that the tibia is slightly anterior to the condyles of the femur. You will notice that it is slightly anterior. But if the PCL is torn, what will happen is the tibia will translate posteriorly or there will be a sag of the tibia. There will be a posterior sag of the tibia. And when you run your thumb, you will notice that there is a step. There is a posterior sag of the tibia because of PCL tear. And that is exactly what I'm trying to assess here. Now, if there is a sag, it is obvious that it is a posterior cruciate ligament tear. But before I confirm that, I would try to first entity translate and then I will try to push it posteriorly. This is known as posterior drawer test. If the tibia is translating posteriorly, it suggests that the PCL is injured. Now the other variation of this is Godfrey's posterior sac test. For this what we will do is, we will flex both the hips to 90 and both the knees to 90 degrees. Let's do this. Sir, can you do this? Yeah. Now we have both the hips and both the knees flex to 90 degrees. Now if there is a PCL tear in any of the knee, what will happen is the tibia will translate posteriorly and then you can compare it with the healthy side to assess the sag. If the pathological side has a PCL tear, the tibia will sag posteriorly and the normal side there will be no sag and you can compare it and say that there is a PCL tear. But please remember, it can only help you assess if there is a unilateral injury. If there is a bilateral injury, both the sides will sag and you will be confused. But please also understand that normally the tibia will not sag posteriorly. In any case, if the tibia is sagging posteriorly, it must mean that there is a PCL tear. So again, what is happening is I flex the hip to 90 degrees and the knee to 90 degrees. And because the PCL is torn, the tibia is sagging posteriorly. Uh, this is Godfrey's posterior sag test. Quickly summarize here. ACL, we have Lachman's test, the best test, the most sensitive test, anterior draw test, pivot shift is the most specific test and Lely's test. For PCL, you have posterior draw test and Godfrey's sag test.